Whenever hazards are encountered, the first thing we usually think of is PPE. Yet PPE is actually our last line of defense. To properly control hazards, we must work our way down the hierarchy of controls. What we finally settle on is usually a combination of controls that includes PPE. However, we must also be careful not to create more hazards unintentionally. The most effective control is to eliminate the hazard. This often requires seeing the problem from a different perspective, enabling the eradication of unnecessary hazards. An example would be repairing heavy equipment in situ, eliminating the hazards of transportation. The next most effective control is substitution. This involves exchanging a hazard with something less hazardous. For example, substituting 120V power tools with battery-operated tools whenever working in wet areas. Next on the list is isolation. This is effectively separating personnel from the hazards. This can often be achieved by conducting hazardous tasks after hours. Or using of barriers, such as cages around automated equipment. The third most effective control is engineering. Examples of this are machine guards, ventilation systems, circuit breakers, and smoke detectors. Next on this list are administrative controls. This basically amounts to our training programs, rules, laws, and procedures. However, it's not enough to base your PPE on your tasks alone. You must also consider environmental hazards. For instance, your task may not be noisy. You may find yourself in a noisy environment. Therefore, your PPE must also include hearing protection. Hence, it's up to us to be good workplace neighbors and advise others of our hazards. This can easily be communicated in our pre-start meetings, by signage, barricades and following our safe work procedures. Also be aware your PPE requirements may change during the shift, as the hazards of your tasks and in the wider environment change. If PPE is the last line of defense, we must also consider clothing. Generally, the factory floor is not the place for open footwear, shorts or shirts exposing the midriff or shoulders. Adversely, it's also not the place for baggy clothing or anything that could become caught up in machinery. To prevent slips, we must also ensure our footwear has plenty of tread. In some areas, steel toe shoes are required to protect your feet from injury from falling objects. We can never know when a particle could take flight and strike our eye. Therefore, it makes good sense to wear safety glasses. However, these shouldn't be confused with sunglasses or spectacles, as these don't meet the standards required to protect eyes. In some situations, goggles or a face shield should be used. These are also a good option to wear over your spectacles. When the hazards are objects falling from above, such as when operating a crane, a hard hat is required. Whenever in the vicinity of mobile equipment, such as forklifts, High visibility clothing or a reflective vest must be worn. This helps the operator to see personnel. Nevertheless, always stay well clear of mobile equipment and suspended loads. Hands are frequently coming in contact with sharps, chemicals and pinch points. Many hazards can be mitigated with cut-resistant gloves. When using chemicals, refer to Section 8 of the Safety Data Sheet or SDS for the type recommended. The SDS will be covered in greater detail later. Noise is a hazard that affects the operator and everyone in the environment. If the noise exceeds 90 decibels or heavy traffic levels, its mandatory hearing protection is used, such as earmuffs or plugs. Please seek supervisory advice on the selection and correct fitting. Other hazards that affect the entire environment are dust and fumes. These hazards should be fully mitigated using the hierarchy of controls. If not, it may be necessary to wear a mask or respirator. The type required can be found in Section 8 of the SDS. That's our look at the hierarchy of controls and the most commonly used PPE. Finally, remember to be a good neighbor and share information about any hazards.
Abide by all safety systems and if ever in doubt, seek supervisory advice.